All right, everybody, welcome back to the shop. Now it's time to install the seats. Now, I made the seat off camera. It's pretty straightforward. This is a two by 10. For this barrel, I cut them at 21 inches. But when I cut them, instead of the saw being at 90, I cut it at about a 10 degree angle. That allows for a little bit of the curve of the barrel. I set these seats for about a nine inch clearance, meaning nine inches from the top to the very center of bottom. When I cut these originally and, and put them in the first time, I was having a little bit of issue with this little curve back here catching the barrel. So what I did was measure two inches back and put a mark and measured three quarters of an inch over and just connected the dots with the circular saw. I cut it off. And what that winds up giving you is something that looks about like that. So our, our cut isn't 90 degrees, it's 10 degrees. And then we just chopped the corner, the back corners off. Now, remember we made sure that the back of this barrel was level. And this is where it starts to really pay off because the next two steps for us, we're gonna draw on that measurement to make sure that everything else works low. We've got a small torpedo lever. We're gonna rely on this for our measurement. Our seat in there and put our torpedo level in there. Now right there that seat is level meaning that seat is parallel or very close to parallel with the axle. Now the way I held these in on all the other barrel trains and I've had no issues is I've just used lag bolts about an inch and a quarter inch and a half long and I just lag them right into the side. We're going to use a little flashlight trick. And what we're going to do is just lay the flashlight on top once we get it level we're going to lay it on top of the seat. We're going to be able to see where the side of the, the board is. Move down and pre-drill our holes through the plastic. Swap over to a, an impact gun. We'll just run these right in the side. We'll come over to the, same, the opposite side and duplicate that measurement. It's real simple and I'll show you how to do it. The next thing we need to do is put the little dash piece in there. Now, the only purpose of the dash piece, well actually it serves two purposes. One is to strengthen the barrel right here because it's a little bit weak. Two is something to mount the steering wheel to. I cut this out. All I did was take a, a measurement of, I guess it was two and a quarter inches and put a pencil mark. Took my little torpedo level, held it on the bottom, held the board out here and got it about level where my two and a quarter inch mark was right here found level, took a pencil and drew a mark. Took the jigsaw, cut the radius out. It's not perfect. Again, we're not building a watch. Okay, all I've done is swap to a little bit smaller drill bit because I'm going to be using a stainless Phillips wood screw and change to a Phillips bit. These are number 10 by 3 quarter inch stainless steel wood screws. I'm going to take that, take that same level And I know that right here I'm gonna need a screw. Now what I'm gonna do is get the bottom of it level. Hey buddy, will you come over and hand me the screw down? It's always helpful to have a helper. And a good one at that. Okay, we've got our first one in place. The next two come easy. Just for symmetry, I just measure over four and a half inches. And do the same thing again. That's really firmed up this front. Where we're at right now is we want to make the brake light simulators for the barrel train. The kids think it's really neat, it's really cool because their train car has taillights. Uh, even though I get it, a train car really doesn't have taillights, but I mean, really, who cares, right? They're having fun, that's what it's all about. These right here, these are seals for a 55 gallon drum. Now, 
I got these from Orlando Drum, the same place I got the barrel from. Um, you can probably find them on eBay or online somewhere. The ways that these are designed to work is they f when the uh, manufacturer of a product or a chemical fills the barrels up, they screw the bung down tight. This is a seal that goes over it. It snaps down. And once it's snapped down, it doesn't come off. You're supposed to grab this and peel it off, similar to like a uh, gallon of milk. It's a, it's a seal. Now, once we put these on, we don't want them to come back off, so we're going to take this off. So first things first, I just take a pair of shop scissors and just snip that off. This is a quarter inch drill bit. This hole is actually just a little less than a quarter inch, but again, we're not building a watch, so... Um, I had some 1032 machine screws, and then I have some 1032 lock nuts and a 1032 flat washer. Just put the flat washer in there, and then because these things do have a tendency to kind of jiggle and balance while, you, while you're uh, pulling the kids around, I'm just going to put a little bit of this um, removable Loctite. I'm just going to put a drop of it in there. Well, it was a little more than a drop, but if a little is good, a lot's better, right? <laughs> Rinse and repeat, flat washer. We'll have a blue Loctite. Now we can center these up just a little bit on the holes. Once we get them all centered up, just take a screwdriver. Don't go crazy tightening them. We're not talking about tremendous forces here. We just don't want them to jiggle loose. Now you have two brake light simulators, real simple, and you probably have less than a buck and a half a piece in them. The next thing we need to do is build a steering wheel. Now here was my big dilemma. When I started building these barrel trains for the kids, my idea was to do this low cost. One thing that brought a real kink into my, my plan was the steering wheel. Now I went to uh, your box store and I tried to buy some of this style steering wheel that fits on like a, a kid's playground. This sucker is $25 a piece at Home Depot. Went online, I could get them for $23 a piece online. So obviously there's not a large margin in them, but I'm not paying $25 a piece for a plastic steering wheel. I'll go to a junkyard and buy steering wheels out of a, a bunch of wrecked cars before I pay $25 for this thing. This, this happens to be off our kid's playset. This right here is EMT conduit. Uh, any hardware store, Home Depot, Lowe's, that kind of thing will carry EMT conduit. This happens to be a piece of half inch EMT conduit. Really inexpensive, about two bucks for, for a 10 foot stick of it. This is a real inexpensive conduit bender. So you know what, I've got a conduit bender. I wonder if I can take a piece of half inch conduit and bend it into a circle and then weld it together to make a steering wheel. So that's what I did. It's not perfect. But we're not building a watch, we're building a toy. I've got my uh, con little trusty inexpensive conduit vendor. And 10 foot stick of a half inch EMT conduit. I think I got three steering wheels out of one of these. And um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the conduit vendor in here. And we're gonna bend this and just keep bending it and sliding the conduit vendor as we bend it. And we're gonna create a corkscrew. And we're just going to keep bending that corkscrew all the way until we're done. Now, I don't need three steering wheels, I need one. So what I'm going to do is bend this all the way back around about one and a half circles. And then I'll saw it out of there with the bandsaw. Watch how I do it. Alright everybody, we've got the safety gear on, um, we got it clamped up, um, I did a little something that's a little out of the ordinary for my shop setup, 
Usually I just ground the bench. What I did here is I actually took the ground and I connected it right to the piece of metal because it's held in the clamp and the clamp's sitting on the table and I wanted to get a good ground. Uh, grounds are often overlooked and they're really important for getting a good, a good weld. So we're going to put a couple of little tack welds on this, uh, try, to, try to hold it in place and then we'll put a little seam weld all the way around it. Tacked up, I can take it out of the clamp, turn it over and get to the back side of the weld here. Overall not bad, I'm going to take it over to the LS grinder, we'll grind up the, uh, the weld just a little bit, get a few of the dingleberries off it. Okay, so our spokes are four inches long, so we're going to put a mark at four inches, and we're going to put another mark at four inches. This should leave us about three quarters of an inch between the marks. We're going to bend this about 22 degrees and then once that's bent down and bent down we're going to weld this in to make the third spoke so we need to drill a hole right there this is four inches this is four inches and this is four inches okay so they're four inch spokes this winds up being three quarters of an inch Okay, we've got this all bent. We've got our other spoke to put in here. We can place this across here and put this, this spoke right across that weld joint. And by doing that, we create a bridge or a brace for that joint. Now, I, again, I'm not really concerned about it, but um, just for, for grins, we'll, we'll go ahead and tack it in place. Okay, we got everything tacked there. We compare it to our other steering wheel. It's not quite the same diameter, but pretty close. Uh, good enough for what we're doing. Everything looks to be in place and pretty centered up. A couple more tacks and we'll just go ahead and run it. Oh yeah.
Okay, if you noticed um, the sound of the welder when I was welding that, you, sometimes it sounded a little raspy. That raspy sound is caused by the zinc that's on the outside of the EMT conduit. When it burns, it creates a rasp or a pop sound. And um, I could have ground it all off, but again, this is a kid's toy and it'll never break. So I'm gonna go take it over to the grinder. I'm gonna grind a few of the little uh, willy buggers off it. Um, we're ready to get it painted and then we can install it in the barrel train with some graphics and our taillight simulators and that car will be ready to use. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed what you saw here today. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and like us on Facebook. Please, somewhere down below here is a link. We've got a lot more really cool stuff coming. Is that right, camera guy? Is there a link down there? Send me a comment. I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Click whatever link. Click something. See you soon. And I've got a half-inch conduit bender. And on the floor, I've got a 10-foot 10, 10 stick of uh, EMT conduit. All right, then. So we'll start over again.